Welcome back, brothers, to the shop for our annual winter survival kit, getting our trucks, getting our rigs ready for winter driving conditions. In today's video, we're going to be covering four things, tools, traction, first aid, what's the other thing? It doesn't matter. I've got everything laid out here. We'll just jump right into it. Now, let's cover traction first. So in traction, it's hard to believe, but as far as technology has advanced, there really is, if we're talking about for four-wheel dri four drive trucks and heavy work, there's just nothing better than a set of tire chains. Now, not all tire chains are created equal, so know that. Now, a guy's got to get what you can afford, so cheap chains are better than no chains, and unless they're cable chains, and then, well, look at the side of the road in the wintertime, and you'll see you'll have your answer there. If you want to buy it right, if you want to buy once, cry once, get the good ones. Go to a place that deals with uh, heavy trucks, you know, that deals with professionals and get the square link, the chains with the square, square link crossbars. They're a hard alloy. These are a chain you'll have for the rest of your life. Now with the new cam systems that chain ha chains have like these, that makes them a lot more universal. Back in the day when my granddad, we used to chain up, go elk cutting and stuff, you know, your chains had to be very specific. You know, you didn't have these options. But now you can size up on the larger size. And if you change tires, if you go a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, typically you can make them fit. Do you need four sets? Uh, I always had four sets in the past. Rarely did I ever use them, except for one time, I think maybe to show off. Two is plenty. And remember, if it's really, really slippery, you can always, with a four-wheel drive, you can put chains on the front. So my granddad always did. He was able to steer better. But a good set of tire chains, have them set up, and good to go. Don't forget your tensioners. Throw in a couple bungees. Make sure that you get those tensioners. I have these worked up. And the tire chains, boom, all ready to go. That's all you need. Now, another thing that will get a lot of guys out of a scrape, I mean, you've probably seen cars that were, when the conditions get so icy, where it's just slipping off the side of the road, or maybe you're, pulled into a grocery store and you can't get traction, you can't go in, can't get going, cat litter. Double bag it because it will leak out all over your truck. Ask me how I know. Uh, just double bag it in the big freezer bags. But a couple pounds of cat litter, throw that down there. It's incredible. It gives great, great traction. Uh, and it's also around to clean up a, a mess or clean up an oil spill or a mess if you have to deal with that. Shovel, man, is equally as important as a shovel. It's hard to carry a shovel in the back of a truck. The one that I'm gonna go with this year, I'm trying it out, but it's the, it's the Glock field shovel. I was skeptical about their tools, you know, being polymer and all of that, and I finally broke down and bought one. I'm very impressed with it. And the nice thing about the Glock shovel is, you know, it's great for packs, it's so light, it's gonna have a built-in saw. Now, it's not a great saw, but, you know, it's better than no saw, and if you needed to cut some branches or get through something, you could. But it's a really ingenious design, very clever, very affordable, and look how small it folds up. It really weighs nothing. It comes in a nice case, and I don't know what these things are, $30, $30 or so, but man, I'm really impressed with that. You'll need that, especially if you get into snow. A lot of times, you can get a guy out or get yourself out just by digging it out, throwing down a couple sticks or some fur boughs. But if you don't have a shovel and you don't have gloves, it's going to be a rough haul for you if you have to get in there and dig with your bare hands in frozen wet conditions. So make sure you have a shovel. I throw in a saw. You know, I, this, I got this silky big boy. I got plenty of room in the back of the truck. I'm going to throw this in there. I just rarely use it. But the big saw like this or some sort of a folding hand saw or even a small axe is really important if you live in the forest or have trees or branches that might come down in a windstorm. I mean, just a tree this big across the road and you want to get home, if you don't have any way of dealing with that and you don't have a rope and you can't pull it out of the way, that really is a, it's going to stop you. You're not going to get past it. So having a small saw or a small ax that you can chop through uh, is pretty important, especially for those who live in, those of us who live in the Pacific Northwest. Also, uh, when it comes to towing, let's see, let's see. I carry this small little Fisker's ax. This is just kind of a throwaway. I don't have any illusions that I'm gonna do any heavy work with this, but I found that it seems like when things get cold and frozen, all, there's always something that's frozen. 
Maybe it's the pin on your on your receiver hitch. Maybe it's uh, you know you just need to break some ice. There's just so many different things you need to chip through, and not having a hammer in cold weather is is always a problem. So get yourself a small hammer or just some throwaway little axe like this, um, and put that in your kit. You know what I'm going to do here? We're going to we're just going to throw that right in there in that Glock bag. Look how nice that fits in there until it cuts the bag open, right? I'll throw a piece of tape on that. But something like that to think about. So that really kind of covers the traction aspect of it. Now don't forget uh, to have some sort of a safety flare and think about what's it gonna be like if you have to crawl underneath your truck and it's 33 degrees and it's it running water underneath there, do you wanna get all wet and be frozen the rest of the day? get a small raincoat. Go to the thrift store, buy a couple raincoats, make sure it's got a hood so that if you needed to get out and walk or walk to safety, I've had to do that before, you would very be hap very happy to have this. Plus, you can put it on when you crawl underneath your rig and you're not going to spoil all your clothing and get all dirty. A space blanket is a great combination. You space blanket or a small tarp or a piece of plastic, just throw that thing down there. You can lay down there. You can stay dry with your, with your jacket on and, and put your gloves on. Be sure you have a good pair of gloves in there to keep your hands warm when you're doing putting your chains on the stuff because it's a miserable job handling that cold metal. It just sucks all of the heat out of your hands and it's pretty rough. So I kind of look at this as a package. You got your gloves, a raincoat with a hood, um, and a good space blanket or a tarp uh, is pretty hard to beat. Have some signaling, signaling devices. It's dangerous. I've had some scary situations where I've been stuck or broke down on a blind corner. Cars are raging by and it's terrifying being under the rig. You know, you really are put yourself at risk. Having something like these little flashers, they're pretty affordable now. They have uh, dual purpose. You can use them as a small flashlight, but they're great signaling devices. You can just take these things, they're rubber coated, and you can huck them out there behind you. It just gives some warning uh, to folks that are maybe coming up or approaching too fast that there's a hazard ahead and it might just save your life. Road flares, you could do that too. That might even be a better option, but uh, just something to consider. Have something, some sort of a signaling device, especially if you're in the dark. Now, when it comes to retrieval, um, you know, you may or may not want to do this. I, I kind of enjoy being prepared. I, I have retrieved and pulled a lot of people out of the ditches. You don't need a ton of stuff, but you do need a really good uh, tow rope or chain. I'm not a big fan of a chain so much anymore. It's, um, it's very static and when it, it's, it's hard on vehicles and it comes tight and it jerks. There's better things out there now. Not to mention having 20 pounds of chain loose in the driver's compartment if you were in a rollover, an accident, is really, really dangerous. Uh, having been on the fire department and running a lot of car wrecks, I've seen terrible, terrible accidents that could have been avoided just because of, of things that were in the cab that, that shouldn't have been in the cab. But these big synthetic ropes, like the Bubba ropes, for example, get a good heavy 20-footer. They, they stretch a little bit. Uh, they help with the retrieval. They're not so hard on the vehicle. And if they are loose in the cab, you know, if this is flying around, that's going to be a whole lot better than 20 pounds of logging chain. With this, make sure you have thought out, how am I going to attach this to my rig, and how am I going to attach this to a rig that might need help that's in a snowbank? Remember what I've said about the trailer balls. It's not safe to tow with a trailer ball. They can break, they can slip off, it's all sorts of problems. The guy's better off to have a good shackle, uh, something like this that you can slide in in the receiver hitch uh, where you can hook onto safely uh, and tow someone out. Make sure, don't forget to have your trailer, if you don't have it in your receiver, don't have your pin. And if you're worried about that, just get an extra one and just keep it in there as a unit. So you've got this hooks to your truck. You've got a good heavy tow rope on the other end. And I really, really like these soft shackles. These are getting more affordable now. If you haven't seen them, they're, they're nice because they're very strong. Uh, they don't weigh anything. And you can usually weave them around anything. The majority of people you're going to find in the ditch are people that are not prepared. They're going to be driving passenger vehicles, passenger cars. And a lot of them don't have pick points or easy places to pull out. Even a lot of the domestics don't have them. What I found with these guys is that you can wrap them pretty much around anything. You can wrap them around an axle. You can wrap them around um, a frame, cross member, whatever. You can usually get something going. And having a pair of these goes a long ways. So this is a pretty good retrieval kit uh, right here. Um, that's really all, a guy, really all a guy needs for that. 
Now, when it comes to uh, personal tools, uh, I'm going to show you my personal kit and some things that I put in. I'm actually going to bring you over here closer so we can take a look at the roll, uh, and I'll tell you why I like the roll. I think it's probably about the best way to go. Uh, this is a tool roll made by Carhartt. Uh, I have two of these. I haven't found a better one. It's just kind of a copy of the old school one, very similar to the one that my granddad used to carry in the back of his truck. It's not so big, it's easy to transport between vehicles, and it gives you lots of, lots of places for everything that you need. Really, I mean, the backbone of the whole thing uh, is the, these two tools right here. I have gone on and on about them, but these two tools, hey, click the thumbs up if you like these videos. All right, these two tools are, I'll put a link to these in the subject heading as well, uh, are made by Nipex. They're a German brand. They're very high quality, and as I'm fond of saying, they're a toolbox um, in two tools, really. Uh, you have a, basically an adjustable wrench that takes the place of the old school crescent wrench. I find it to work better, uh, just to be more, have more, more versatility, and then a pair of the, your Cobra style out pliers. You know, you can get in and to deal with big stuff. I mean, in a pinch, you can, and I have, you know, even gotten a trailer ball loose with this. You know, I wouldn't recommend it, but I mean, it's, you, it's better than not having anything. You're not going to get it off with your fingers. But with these two tools right here, man, a guy can accomplish a lot of stuff. So that right there are my two main things. Screwdriver. Regular screwdriver is handy, scraping, prying, digging. It's, I think our friend AVE said, of all tools, I remember this is, you know, just one of the most useful tools. When you think about it, that's the one you probably grab more than anything. You're prying paint cans, you're, you're digging holes, you're you know, it's just, it's just a handy thing to have. Uh, just one of those things, right? I have a small hand saw in here, and a, I, I throw in a, a sawzall, a reciprocating saw blade, that's, uh, that can cut metal. Yeah, it's gonna be rough if you had to cut through something thick, but you can get through a, a gate if you got locked behind a gate, uh, given enough time and space, right? But um, it, it's, a, it's a handy thing to have. I don't know that I've used one per se, but I know that there's a situation that will come up someday where I'll be glad that I had it. As well as a file, the same thing goes for a file. You know, that old trope of you know, the prisoner filing out of the bars, you know, there's truth behind that. Again, it takes a long time, but you can get through stuff with a file. Um, you can cut through any, pretty much any sort of metal unless it's really, really hard. Uh, there's a piece of ferro rod in there. You know, this, of course, is always evolving, but I've got a regular screwdriver here that has a, a myriad of bits. You know, just, they're just, it's not nothing fancy. It's kind of just a cheapo one, but it gives you... You know, you've got your number two, one, two, and three Phillips, and you've got some squares and torques and standards, and just gives you a few options uh, in case you needed to tighten something. Uh, having it, it, it's a lot of screwdrivers in just one small package, which I kind of like that. I've got a small electrical tester. Uh, that's going to come in handy. You know, we have a lot of electrical problems, fuse, fuses and stuff. It's nice to have that so you're not completely in the dark. A full set of standard and metric Allen wrenches. A lot of these, a lot of our new vehicles are going to use this sort of thing. Uh, so I always want to have my Allen wrenches, and that's a pretty decent set right there. A number two Phillips, of course, you know, these two, there's our bread and butter right there when it comes to screwdrivers. That's going to handle most things that we run into. Uh, so I like to have a dedicated screwdriver. I've got a few small zip ties in there. I have a small, just inexpensive, um, a knife you know, for whatever you need to do. Keep it sharp, you know, buy, these are really inexpensive. Just don't use it, just put it in your kit and forget about it and it'll always be sharp if you need to perform field surgery or who knows what. We've got our metric wrenches. Um, I'm a big fan of having a plug kit. I mean, this really is all you need to do to patch a lot of tires right there, provided you have an air pump, right? Which I have onboard air, but I have repaired tires in the field numerous times with these. I've got multiple videos on it. There's lots of guys out there that do. Um, it's all you need and they're just a few dollars and it's all you need to, to repair a lot of tires or at least get you back in, limp you back in until you can get to the tire store. Over here, I'm going to have some electrical tape, very essential. Uh, you could use this for first aid. You could secure things. Uh, a way to start fires, I like to have two. I've got a small, a big lighter there with some windproof matches and some tinder, of course, in here wrapped up with some, with some tape. You know, and that you can, gives you multiple ways. Having a lighter, just for example, I've had my keys fro or my locks frozen where I couldn't get the key in uh, up in cold environments. And you, know, you can get one of these going and get a little bit of heat on it and you can get those open. And if you can't, if it's too windy, just heat up your key 
with a with a lighter to get it get it good and hot, and then put it in there, and it'll melt that ice out, and you'll get in in your car no, no problem. Um, Granddad always carried a couple of jumper wires uh, with alligator clips. These are actually from his toolkit um, that I got from some of his things. If you needed to buy, bypass something, uh, if something was acting up or you had a short uh, and you burn up a section of wire and you didn't have any more, you could clip those alligator clips on there and you can do lots of, lots of different things with that. I've got some ear protection in there and then uh, a way to charge my cell phone. Make sure you have a plug for, if you have iOS, make sure you have that, uh, a way to charge USB cable and then a, uh, a standard for Android if you wanted to a phone for someone else that didn't didn't have uh, a way to charge their phone. So in all of that stuff, you know, that's quite a quite a bit of good capability there. All fits in there really nicely in the tool roll. It's not too fat, um, and that works pretty good. A couple of extra things here uh, before we get to the end. Make sure you have a solid flashlight, a good flashlight with some extra batteries. Um, stream lights are kind of nice this style, the firefighter style, because it, if you're working and you're putting your chains on, you can sit it on the ground and you can turn it on and it holds itself upright. It has a nice clip on it. You can clip it onto the front of your shirt uh, or your jacket and it gives you kind of a hands-free light. It's a handy design. Uh, it works good. It's got a ring. You can hang it. Uh, these are not super expensive and they're really, really durable. Just remember your lithium batteries are not going to be as effective in cold weather. You might want to switch over to to the alkaline, just, just so you know. GPS, I, I have had to take to foot a couple times. Being stuck at a snowbank, you don't have to have the latest, greatest, fancy one. If you just go to like the old school, this is an old school e-trex, you can buy these things for a little bit of nothing off of eBay. Everyone wants the new model, but they're just as effective as anything else. They don't require cellular signal. Your phone is not always going to be reliable if you don't have, if you're going off of like Google Maps or anything like that. So having this it takes the same AA batteries, give you a good peace of mind. You can pin your truck and you're not going to get lost. At least you can find your way back if you can't, if nothing else. But throw it in the pack, forget about it, throw it in your glove box and just kind of leave it there. Some duct tape, obvious reasons. Pen and paper. This came in handy just this year. I, we were uh, on a big dirt biking loop and I got separated from the group and it was getting dark at night and fortunately one of our uh, my friends that we were riding with had a pen had a pad and paper just like this and he was able to leave some notes at a key spot that i found or i would not have gotten my i don't know if i would have got myself out but he'd left me a note and arrows and i was able to follow it back because he had taken he had taken the time to put together a good kit and man i mean i have not been real consistent with this in the past but from this day forward just gives me goosebumps thinking about spending the night out there um, I will always have this a good right in the rain or something that's kind of waterproof if you can get it uh, that you can leave a note on your car just just tell people what's up or record license plates or or what have you and we'll just round out a few things of course obviously it goes without saying a good solid first aid kit with a tourniquet um, it is nice to have. If you're looking for a quality kit, um, my friend Dave Pruitt over there at AMP3 uh, puts together some awesome kits. Awesome, awesome kits. There's, there's lots of good ones out there, um, but this is the one that big dedicated field kit uh, that I keep uh, in my truck. Uh, to round it out, um, a jump starter, obviously. Maybe I might be buying a new jump starter. A jump starter that uh, is going to give you the ability to charge your phone as well. You know, it, if your battery goes dead, you know, <laughs> these have USBs in them. Uh, you'll be able to jump start your car, have that in there. Just make sure that it's topped off. You know, these do kind of degrade over time and they get lower and lower. So just discipline yourself and make sure that when you put it in there that it's fully charged. It'll get you through the winter, no problem. Um, ice brush, of course, ice scraper for those of us who live in the cold weather. Uh, this is really important. You've probably been out with a credit card, right? Uh, trying to scrape off the ice off your car. Fire extinguisher goes without saying. That should be in your kit as well. Don't cheap out on your fire extinguisher, especially for this one, Amorex. Amorex is the best of the best. They're not all created equal. If you want one that's going to be there when you need it, then Amorex is probably about the best way to go. I had a guy that pulled over and saved my truck from burning, that, that caught on fire and saved my truck um, at a time in my life where I would have been in absolute dire straits without that truck because he pulled over and he had a fire extinguisher and he put the fire out before it burnt my truck up. There's nothing more, you, there's nothing, never I've ever felt more helpless 
than to have a fire that's getting out of control that's small but you just don't have the tools you don't have gloves and you don't have anything to put it out and you're just watching second by second watching it grow where if you had something just like this or even a pair of leather gloves you could have at least stomped it out or batted it out it's a it's a very it's a bad feeling you don't ever want to experience Amorex get a small one mount it in there put it underneath your seat and just forget about it guess that's about it my, uh, oh, one thing I wanted to talk about also, get one of these for your state. If you live uh, close to a border and you are frequently in two states, get one for each state. It's the best map out there. It's a Gazetteer uh, from Del Delorme. Uh, they're state by state and they're very, very detailed maps. And if you lose your battery or if you lose your GPS or your cell signal, this will help you to plan a route. If you need to get off the highway and you're in an unfamiliar ground, this is essential. It's very easy to read. They've got a grid system on the back. You can easily find where you're at. You find the page number. You go right to it. They're very, very good. They're, they're a, a well, well worth the investment, uh, the Gazetteer. Um, what else do I have? That's it. I like my dude wipes. The dude wipes are handy for cleaning up your hands. Uh, for uh, if you need toilet paper, uh, just a million different things, cleaning up uh, kids that scrape their knees, throw these in your door compartment, throw them under the seat, uh, very handy. I find myself getting after these things all the time, always washing stuff off my hands. Um, I really like them. I, I've included it in my kit this year. Now, one thing I have done in the past or recommended in the past that I liked, which I don't like, and I, after Mrs. W brought it to my attention, I always tried to put all my winter survival kit in a box like this and I found this to be a kind of a bad deal. Um, she complained about it because I put together her kit and I put it in the back of the car and she's always moving it around and it's square and it's hard. Uh, it's big. It takes up a lot of space. What's going on mama? Uh, and to have that thing loose in your cab when you're um, if you had a rollover an accident would be it could be deadly. I'm, I'm rethinking that. I think that that's actually a horrible idea and a bad way to carry stuff. It's just, it's a real burden to deal with. It's, I think a guy's better off to, uh, you want to get in your box here? She's, she's pretty demanding. She doesn't like it when I don't pet her all day. Um, I think the better way to go is to throw it in a series of, put it in a series of small bags. A lot of the new trucks, the new cars have pretty good storage and compartments. Mine has uh, enough room in the back where I can lay all these things in there. And if you put it, just random small bags, go to the grocery or to the thrift store and get some cheap old backpacks or just different variety of things and just kind of set up one for towing and one for tools and such. And if you can spread it out, usually you can get stuff under your seat or in behind the seat. Uh, and if something does come loose in the cab, it's less likely to really cause injury if it's kind of spread up and, and padded into smaller bags. You, know, you might put a blanket in there. You know, another thing, emergency blanket, uh, something, an old wool blanket or some of these more military style are pretty tightly packed and they don't take up a bunch of space. But on, I've rolled up on accidents where people were outside just freezing and, and suffering from shock and it goes a long ways for morale and just makes people feel better just if you can wrap something around them and just get them out of the weather and having a blanket, especially in cold climates, is, is nice. Because we have our space blanket, that red one, and that, that makes two, so uh, that works pretty good as well. So I, I would throw a blanket in there. I guess that's it. Goodness, it's a lot of stuff to cover. Thanks for watching. I sure appreciate everything. Please keep my family in your prayers. We pray for you constantly. May God bless you, and we'll see you all on the next video. Okay, Mama. Okay, okay.